Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and the folks from Google sent over their brand new hotly anticipated internet router for us to take a look at, the OnHub. And I want to say something right up front about this product because I know a lot of people were eager to see this thing. Uh, this is really designed for consumers who have a very hard time uh, configuring their network or understanding how it works. It is a uh, almost an autopilot wireless router, which I think is really needed in the marketplace because as you all know, especially those of you who are tech savvy, it is very difficult even for tech savvy people sometimes to get their routers configured the right way. This one kind of does it on its own. And I'll talk more about that moving forward here. But I think if you're really tech savvy and have a good understanding of networking, this is probably not going to be the product for you. It lacks a lot of configuration options that you might be accustomed to seeing on other routers. But for folks that really don't want to think about it, just want the thing to work, uh, I think this is a really good option. And uh, Google made this along with uh, TP-Link, which is a pretty big manufacturer of wireless networking products. And uh, they've really focused on the wireless experience with this. So this is designed for improving uh, wireless uh, networking in your home. And that's really kind of the focus of the product at the moment. Although there are some things that they can do via software to update it over time. And it will in fact update itself. Google will be maintaining the software on this uh, so for security and also just for adding features, they're going to be uh, pushing down updates to this thing automatically. So really, once you get it configured, uh, you plug it in and it should just kind of work for uh, hopefully in perpetuity for you. So it might be a little bit easier than what you might already be using. Now, I spoke with some folks from Google today and they said too that the aesthetics of the product, the overall industrial design, are really part of the wireless signal experience because they want to encourage people to put this someplace a little bit more conspicuous uh, so that you have less things blocking the wireless signals and get a better uh, overall signal strength because you'll be closer to where people may actually congregate in your home. So it is a pretty attractive looking product. Uh, not a lot of ports on it though uh, because of that. So you have a little uh, cylinder portion here that you can uh, take off and then uh, underneath that uh, sleeve is where all the ports are. So you have your port here to plug into your cable modem or your DSL modem. There's a single ethernet port. These are both gigabit ethernet ports. So you can plug in a computer with a hard wire. You could also of course hook up a hub or a switch to get uh, more ethernet ports available if you wish to do that. Uh, there is a USB port that is not utilized at the moment, but again, there will be uh, updating this thing via software uh, over the air essentially over time. So you may see that port come into play later on. Of course, you can plug your power in there and then there's a reset button for setting it back to its factory settings. Now there are 13 antennas on this device. This does support the wireless AC standard in the three by three configuration. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, uh, look at the link above where I did a wireless AC router 101 video kind of explaining what all this terminology means, but it has all the latest uh, specifications that uh, most of the routers out there these days have. So you've got uh, the wireless AC as well as the 2.4 gigahertz band uh, wireless N. So you have five gigahertz and two gigahertz uh, with 12 antennas that wrap around the entire device here. So you get really decent coverage. In my tests around the house, I was seeing, depending on where I was, I was getting anywhere from five to 15% better signal strength uh, than I did with my other router. So I was pretty impressed to see it. It did, did have a measurable uh, impact in its wireless range uh, given uh, those antennas and how they're placed. Now the 13th antenna is on the top. And what that one does, it has its own dedicated radio for keeping an eye on the environment that it's in. So it looks for interference and it does things automatically to change the frequencies that these radios operate on in order to get the best possible signal strength to your wireless devices. So it's kind of a neat active system going on here. Again, something that the user doesn't have to think about. There's no channels to configure. It just kind of sits in the background and constantly updates itself. So pretty uh, neat design overall. Uh, but again, this is really designed to be something that you place on autopilot versus something that you configure. But we are going to do now though is configure it to get it up and running. A very simple process, but I wanted to show it to you because it's kind of neat. Uh, so I'm going to plug this in. We're going to hook it up to our network and then uh, take out our Android phone and get it working. All right, the OnHub right now is in its configuration mode. You can see it's pulsing up there. And what I'm gonna do is actually configure it from my Android phone. You can work with both an Android phone or an iPhone. Uh, the Android configuration is actually kind of a neat process. I wanted to show you this one first, then I'll talk about the iPhone configuration in a second. Uh, so I'm just gonna get the uh, process started here. And uh, what it's gonna do is look on uh, the available wireless networks to see if there is an OnHub available. It found one. And now what it's gonna do is actually connect via audio. So we're gonna put the phone kind of close to the top of the speaker here. There is a speaker at the top. And I apologize if you can't see the phone here. Let me see if I can get a better angle here. And I think it got the code there, so it was listening for that audio sound. 
Uh, it has the code. We're going to click connect here. It's going to automatically connect to the OnHub uh, so that we can get everything connected and onto our network. Now, my uh, cable length here was a little bit less than what uh, they included in the box. So I have to use this ugly green cable back there, but they do give you this uh, flat cable here, which is a little bit more attractive to use for connecting it up to your cable modem. Uh, so we're going to call this one uh, OnHub uh, LAN, and we'll then put in our password. will just be uh, my name here, L-O-N-S-E. I-D-M-A-N, and we'll hit uh, the checkbox here. And what'll happen now is it's going to go and get everything set up and registered. And once it's done with that, I am gonna switch over to my iPhone, which I can hook up to my video system so you can see uh, all the available options. There you can hear the, uh, the little speaker going on here as well to let you know that everything configured itself properly. Uh, so this is an important thing. There's more to this product than they're letting on because it does have a pretty high quality speaker in here and it does have a pretty powerful processor on board too. So I think we're going to see more of this product uh, down the road, but we are uh, all uh, configured for the most part here. So I'm going to finish this up and we're going to switch over to my iPhone to see how uh, it all works with its uh, onboard app. All right, we're on my iPhone now. It just works better with my video system. And actually what's kind of neat about this is that when I switched over to the iPhone app, I didn't have to do any configuration. Because this is tied to my Google account, it sees it in here automatically. So you don't have to do any additional configuration after uh, the initial configuration that you just saw. Uh, configuration on the iPhone is pretty simple. There's a few extra steps involved, but they have a very nice guide uh, to getting all of that done. But it's not as simple as it was on the Android platform with that little audio tone thing. Uh, you do have to do a couple of things. We have to pop out the settings and then pop in. But once you're done, uh, what you're gonna see is going to be the same on both platforms. So this is, again, tied to my Google account. Uh, we were able to see this pretty much automatically right when we pop the app open. This will work remotely too and you can get a feel for how your uh, network health is. I've got two devices connected up with my uh, OnHub right now so you can see that uh, right in here. So we've got my iPhone as well as my LG phone and they uh, look up the manufacturer names automatically so you can kind of get a feel for exactly which device is connected where. Although if you have multiple Apple devices or multiple LG devices it might be a little hard to uh, discern which one is which without digging in a little bit further. Now it's cool too is that you can look at data in real time transferring across each device. So you can see my iPhone is uh, downloading something at the moment in the background. I can also go in and look at uh, the last 30 days of data usage to see uh, who might be the culprit consuming all the bandwidth on my network. So you do have some ways to kind of uh, dig down a little bit and see who's doing what. Uh, so there's some nice monitoring going on there. Uh, the one big omission here though is that it doesn't have a guest network. And what that is on most consumer routers now, they set up an isolated area so that if you have guests coming into your home, uh, their computers can't see yours, but they can get on the internet. And that's important because a lot of times I don't know where my, my friends' computers have been. I trust them, but I don't trust any kind of malware that might have found their way onto their computer. So it's nice to have uh, some isolation there. And this one doesn't yet provide that. It might be a feature that shows up in a future software update. Uh, if it does, I'll certainly do a follow-up video and put it uh, linked above so you can see that. But right now, uh, it doesn't have that. Although they do make it easy to show your friend your Wi-Fi password. You can go in here and just uh, go to Wi-Fi access and click on reveal password so they can see it uh, and log in with it. You can also actually forward it to them via email or whatever. I don't recommend doing that. So uh, kind of a quick way to get at your Wi-Fi password. And I know a lot of times people forget what their Wi-Fi password is. Uh, so this adds some convenience for consumers, but a lot of uh, security minded folks may not like this part. So I think that's an area where they can improve uh, by giving us a, a separate guest account so you can keep your information private to you. I get a little warning here at the bottom. This is just a little, uh, they have some cards that will pop up uh, with uh, different uh, warnings or notifications. I have a, another router on my network uh, way down the line here. So we're connecting this to my local network and uh, kind of routing off my local network. It detected that there's another router downstream and is actually just telling me that it saw it out there, which is kind of neat. So pretty smart device. Uh, overall. Not much though in the settings department here. So we have just a few things to look at. Uh, the first thing we'll do is just take a look at the network settings here. All you can really do is just change the Wi-Fi password uh, or reveal the, the uh, password again here. Not much uh, to look at over there. Uh, you have some advanced networking features where you can change the DNS. Right now it defaults to Google's DNS, which is 8.8.8. .8 .8. Uh, that's how it looks up sites on the internet. So Google has a public service to do that. Uh, or you can use your internet provider service or you can add your own. Uh, there are some settings for getting it configured with your particular uh, cable modem or DSL so, uh, provider. So these are all the standard options that uh, exist for that. Uh, they do have some extended settings and these are really the only uh, advanced settings you're going to find on here. So 
So you can set up a static IP for certain devices on your network. So for example, if I wanted to have my LG phone always have the same address, I can just tap on that, uh, give it the address that I want it to have, and then every time that device logs in, it will get the same IP address every time. So where you might want to use that would be if you have like a network attached storage device or something that you want to access from outside uh, the network, you want to have that internal address, the device on your local network, be the same every time. And that's one way to very simply do that. I actually kind of like that interface. It's really nice that you can just assign it with a couple of taps and uh, you get that static IP every time without having to type in long addresses and NAC addresses and everything else. Uh, you can also do port forwarding once you have one of those devices set up. So for example, I could uh, say, you know what, I want to forward all this uh, traffic on port whatever to my Apple iPhone here. I can type in the ports. I can just say, let's say 50, 588 just for a random number. Uh, I can have it go to port 22 perhaps on the iPhone and hit save and now any Anytime something comes in uh, over the network, it'll get routed automatically to my iPhone. So a pretty simple way to get the port forwarding set up. And you can also turn on or turn off the UPnP settings on here too. Uh, other things of note on the bottom here, you can uh, set up managers. So uh, what you can do is if you have a tech savvy family member that you want to give access to this, so they can come in and fix things for you. Uh, you can put in their Google account and they'll be able to log in through their app and gain access to your router. So you want to be careful about who you assign this to, but I know like my parents might find it useful to have me be a manager on their router so that I could come in and help them out from time to time. So you just uh, hit the little plus icon here, uh, put in their name or email address. And if they have a Google account, uh, they can get in there and do that. Uh, over here on the hardware settings, you can also adjust the brightness of the light at the top. So if you have this someplace in the house and you don't want to bother people, uh, you can uh, adjust the brightness uh, all the way up or all the way down or somewhere in between uh, to uh, get rid of that light if you so choose. And one last feature to look at, if you are the owner of the network, you have some ability to give your devices perhaps a little bit more priority over other family members of the house. You'll see a little icon here at the bottom on the network screen. Uh, it's a little circle here. We're going to tap on that and we can fast track specific devices. So if I wanted my iPhone to get priority uh, over my LG phone, I can just tap on that and automatically my iPhone will have a priority on network tasks more than the other devices on the network. So if you're doing a Skype call or maybe you're watching a movie or something and you don't want uh, any, uh, anyone to interfere with that by uploading a large file or downloading something really large, uh, this will give your device the priority both within uh, the routing software built into this device but also in how the Wi-Fi works. So it's in involving both the wireless radios uh, as well as the internal networking of the device. However, it does not work with devices that might be connected through an ethernet port. It's only wireless. And I asked them about this and they said again that their focus on this has been improving the wireless experience. What they had in mind were uh, people using Chromecasts or other TV set-top boxes that uh, might be kind of on the edge of the wireless network or maybe susceptible to uh, other people downloading things at the same time to kind of give those devices a little bit more priority. And you can also uh, extend that time from an hour to four hours, but uh, you cannot set a, a priority device at the moment to be permanent. So I would like to see the ability to have some more flexibility on that device priority, maybe have a couple devices that gain certain priorities above others, but uh, you can kind of get an idea as to where they're going with this. So very basic uh, overall configuration on here, not a very complicated device to set up, uh, which for consumers might be really helpful. So that is the OnHub router from Google and TP-Link, a really nice router, especially for consumers. I just know though that you have to put some trust into Google because again, your uh, account, your Google account is what gets you into this. So you want to be careful with your Google password. You also want to be careful about who you assign as managers to this and make sure that they're practicing uh, good protections of their uh, own login credentials also because all it takes is a Google account to get into this and they're in. Another point to make is that this does send back some anonymous data to Google. Some of that data is used for enhancing its performance on your network. So you can choose to turn those things off if you wish although you might see some performance degradation perhaps because some of the active uh, monitoring won't be working. So they do say it's anonymized data. You can turn that off. But again, uh, there is some communication going back and forth with Google's cloud as well as those updates coming down from Google from time to time that will uh, add features and perhaps change the way this works over time too. So again, you got to trust Google. Uh, but if you do and you don't like fussing around with your uh, networking configuration, I think this will work uh, very well for uh, people that really struggle with that sort of thing. You might even be able to save some money on your cable bill. I know a lot of cable providers will give you a discount for uh, giving back that modem that you're renting from them, buying your own modem, connecting that modem to here, uh, and you can work with that uh, with your own gear versus the cable company. So that again is the OnHub from Google, and this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.